Morning folks, hope you're well. Wednesday morning. Got my brew ready to go. Mm. Somebody contacted me recently and asked me how I make my coffee. There is actually um, a video going back a few years where I actually filmed me making the coffee. <clears throat> it's actually very straightforward. It's not a special coffee. It's regular instant coffee. It's the milk that's the thing. So I have a milk frother um, and I got a professional one. You can buy lots of them, cheap. But I got a one by Duelit, which is a professional company. And that basically gives a very good thick froth. Um, and so basically you're making the coffee the normal way, hot water, instant coffee. If you use pressed coffee or any other coffee, then good for you. Whatever coffee you use is fine. Make your black coffee essentially, and then you put your froth milk into it. And then what I do is I mix it straight away with a spoon so that the froth mixes with the water and it all becomes one big frothy, creamy kind of uh, affair. It does settle after a while, but in the beginning, it's really nice and thick. You do need a good frother for that so that it gives you a nice thick, uh, creamy uh, milk. And then all that is on top is drinking chocolate. It's regular instant drinking chocolate. Pick a, a flavor that you like, and I just sprinkle it on top. I put the, the stuff into a, one of these um, sprinklers, you know, icing sugar sprinklers. Um, and that's it, that's my coffee. But it's just a nice way to start the day. I've been pouring over timetables. I'm working out the timetable for my daughter's wedding. I'm just trying to get everything right, fit everything in. It's a bit of a nightmare getting your head around it. It takes a bit of time. So I hope to get that sorted this morning. Um, yesterday, I actually recorded a, a morning drive video, but I didn't actually upload it. I just didn't think the content was much, you know. It was just a bit of ramble, but there was no real content of value, so I didn't upload it. I am quite critical that way. Um, I can't say that every upload is interesting, but I do try that. Just be sure that I've said something which anybody might be remotely interested in hearing. And yesterday it was just me saying, just waffling really. Anyway, I smoked this pipe. This is my car pipe. Um, some of you will remember it. It's, um, anyway, it's a billiard. Uh, the lighting on, over here is not that great. Actually, let me open the blind. Let's see if it gives us any more light. Not really. Anyway, so basically this is like, um, I call it like a drunken shank because the shank is, it's circular, but it's actually got a flat base right up to there. And here you've got a mortar sleeve and it goes right up to the sleeve and then the sleeve is round. So what you end up having is this sort of flat line here and then it goes upwards at an angle. And at the time when I made it, I liked it because it was different. You know, it's uh, it, that is basically my, um, my design language when I make pipes. I like my pipes to have a classic basis. They're founded on classic shapes, but then just something to lift it, something to give it something, something, a bit of a je ne sais quoi, just to put a bit of LCS touch to it. And this one was probably just a classic way of doing that. And I did that years ago. And I, I just really fell in love with it at the time. I did put it up for sale at the time, but luckily it didn't sell. I wouldn't usually say luckily it didn't sell. You know, obviously normally I'd want it to sell, but in this case, I really wanted the pipe and uh, it didn't sell, so I kept it. And it's got a nickel silver or German silver, as they call it, um, band on there and an acrylic Cumberland saddle stem. And it's been in my car for a good number of years and um, I smoke aromatics in it generally. Um, occasionally I'll put some Orlick Golden Sliced in it if I forget to bring a pipe out and I have some OGS in the car. Um, but generally it's gonna be, uh, it's not gonna have Latakia or anything like that. It's gonna be either aromatic or uh, something sort of universal like a, a Virginia based blend. Anyway, I was smoking yesterday and the draw was really tough on it. And, um, and I've, noticed, I've noticed that in the last few smokes. So I brought it in to just, give it a a quick check and so what i've done is and i, I would recommend this a 
is when you're, I mean, obviously you want to be cleaning it with a pipe cleaner on a regular basis, but it comes to a point where that's not enough. And what I do is I'll get a, a chuck. It doesn't have to be a lathe chuck, but anything that you can grip a drill bit with, you know, you can buy these mini sort of um, holders that will do that on Amazon or eBay, whatever. But anything that you can hold a drill bit with, and mine is 4.5, I drill mine at 4.5. Um, so you just stay with 4.5, you don't want to go any bigger, um, and you find the hole, I just let the screw on the drill bit do the work, no force, I'm not forcing it, I'm just turning. And you just go all the way through, you keep an eye out there, and as soon as it comes through, you anti-clockwise and draw it back. I've done it already so you won't see it, but usually what you'll see is a little bit of black um, gunk on there, and that's basically... It's essentially just retaking it back to almost a briar. There might still be a little bit of blackening in there, but essentially it's going to take it back to its original draft. You know, if you've got a, a draft hole which is too narrow, you can still do that and then widen uh, the draft hole. It'll give you a nice, beautiful open draw and it will certainly take you back to briar in there. But you have to be careful, especially if it's a thin shank. And you have to do it in small increments, you know, in half millimeter increments. You don't want to jump from two and a half to four and a half in one go. You can, but you, if you've got a small shank, you could risk a, a little bit of a crack there. If it's a thick shank, you don't really have a problem. You know, I would say if the shank is 18 mil and above, you don't really have a problem. You can go from two and a half to four and a half. Shouldn't be an issue. Don't take my word for it, but it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, so this shank is 20, but I would say that 18 should be fine. Anyway, so I thought I'd uh, give it a try this morning and see if it's any better. Just had to refill my filter jar. This jar is actually the jar that I got from Asikian Pipes with my pipe. It had the, the lid and everything on it, which I've taken off, just for convenience sake. Um, on the assumption that I can find... ...some little roll cake. Hang on. Alrighty, here we go. It's been a while since I've had some out of this for a bit. We've been getting quite a lot of rain of late and overnight there was rain again, there was rain yesterday and it looks like there's going to be rain again today. It's okay at the moment but it's very overcast so uh, we shall see. So I'm in the middle of doing a, a commission. This is going to be a, a large sort of uh, Dublin. Um, it's a, a very specific commission with a, quite an interesting colour scheme. Once it's finished, there's going to be like a, a turquoise, it's kind of a blue-green kind of stain on the base and on the top half of the bowl, but a lighter stain in the middle. And then over here was going to be like a plateau finish uh, with the black stain. But the customer wanted bird's eye on the side. So bird's eye on the side means that I haven't got plateau on the top. Plateau on the top is when you have straight or flame green. Um, so essentially, that's a plateau block and you've got the grain. I don't know if you can see it, but you've got the grain going that way. When you've got a, when you want to get a bit of bird's eye, it's a block which looks like that. And uh, so the bird's eye is sort of there. It's in the wrong place to do 
a tab on the top. So what I was going to do is to do a faux, a faux um, plateau, but um, when I drilled this pipe, it drilled slightly off center. And um, so I'm going to redo the block. The the stem, I you know, I wouldn't want to redo it. I don't really like working on acrylic. You wanted a white sort of um, stem, which has worked out really, really nice. Once I've finished that off, obviously. Um, and you can see it's drilled there, but I haven't done the slot yet. Um, so that will be sort of a tapered stem from there. But uh, this is really nicely countersunk as well. Um, you can see there's a countersink on there. Um, just a nice shape, you know, a tapered shank there and with a deep bowl is what we wanted, a stacked bowl. But the drill, unfortunately, I don't know why, um, the block must have been slightly off square. Um, but bottom line is it's drilled off centre. Um, I'm not really terribly fussy if it's very slightly off centre. I've got lots of p uh, pipes which are drilled very slightly off centre and I would actually think that they smoke possibly a little bit better because it creates a little bit of a whirlpool effect and it just drags down the smoke in a way which seems to work. Um, it seems, uh, I'm not sure if it's logical, but I've never really had an issue with a pipe which is very slightly off center, but this one is a little bit more than slightly and I don't feel comfortable selling it. So it's gone in my sin bin up there. Um, I just put it on the table here to show you, but it was in the sin bin. So today I've got to do a new bowl. Um, I'm just thankful that I don't have to do a new stem. I really, really don't like working on acrylic stems. Give me ebonite any day. Um, when I'm working with ebonite, you just feel like, it, almost like when you're working with briar, you feel you're sort of um, having an organic interaction one-on-one -on -one with the material. And you're doing your best to shape it and fashion it into something that looks attractive. With ebonite, you feel like a similar kind of material. It's got enough give and enough softness that you can kind of work with it. You can kind of have some kind of interaction with it and, and shape it and do something with it. Acrylic just feels so dead. It, it just feels like there's nothing, there's no life in it. I'm not criticizing acrylic because that's going to a customer, but um, it's just my personal feeling when I'm working with it. Once it's done and made and, and shaped and everything, it's absolutely fine. Especially if you do the button. I know a lot of people don't like acrylic because there's no give in the bite. You know, because it's such a hard, brittle material that when you're biting your tooth, for instance, your canines, a lot of people bite down and you end up, you know, sometimes you'll see on eBay these um, vulcanite stems and they've sort of got a hole through it where they've been chomped through. It's that canine, the, the incisor, which just goes through it um, after day after day after day of use. With acrylic, you don't really get that because it's so brittle. There isn't that give. So they last longer and the shine lasts longer. It doesn't oxidize, but it brings with it the disadvantage that it's just less comfortable. Um, but in my experience, if you shape the button correctly and you shape the bite zone correctly, that is negated to a large extent. I'm not going to say it's as comfortable as ebonite, but it can be very, very comfortable being acrylic as well. Some of my favorite pipes are acrylic so these that's one of my sort of go-to pipes and that's acrylic that's it used to be one of my go-to pipes but i bought it out i've resurrected it recently that's acrylic um, and to be honest with you most factory pipes nowadays will all be acrylic but i would say the vast majority um you got the peterson i got recently um, and this one is actually quite old. This is an Escorti from 1997. That's acrylic. You know, so some of the best, uh, you know, even the Stanwells, the Stanwells went acrylic, you know, a long time ago. I actually was on a Zoom the other day and I learned that Stanwell is closed. And that was a big shock to me. Um, I don't know if it's true. I haven't verified it, but I've got no reason to disbelieve the people that I was talking to. But um, from what I understand, Stanwell has closed down. No more Stanwell, which was a, a real shock, a real sadness that uh, such a historic brand has closed. That's um, that's a big shame. Obviously, there was a big step when it went from Denmark to Italy. So, you know, 
there was a bit of issue I think they had with quality control. They did have a bit of an issue. I must admit that that it, I think that since it went to Italy, there was a bit hit and miss for me with Stanwell. Some of them were absolutely perfect, almost as good as the Danish ones, and some of them were really quite shoddy. Um, I, I had um, some of the. Um, there's a range. I think it's. Uh, let me have a quick look. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's um. It's a range which started recently, which has. Um, it's the Paul Stanwell collection. So those are sort of made in the style of the pipe of the year, but they're not pipe of the year. So it would have a, a, bit, a bit of silver on it and, and that kind of thing, be a nice shape usually. Um, and they would be priced at around 180, 190 euros, something like that. So they're quite expensive. Um, I had one of those um, in the past. I actually bought two of them in the past. And um, when, I, when it got to me, it was absolutely fine, but the finishing of the shank was quite shoddy. So the silver work, so they often have a silver ring and then another acrylic ring over it, a black ring over it, which finishes off the shank. And then you have the stem with a, with a silver band on it. So um, w the way the shank was finished, the, the shank face just wasn't very good. Um, and um, I don't have that pipe anymore, but I can't show it to you. But um, as I say, having said that, I've got my 2020 pipe of the year. This is very dusty. That's the 2020 pipe of the year. A beautiful plateau. I don't know how they finish it. It's got this matte, but yet still a little bit of a sheen to it, like a dull shine to it. But a very, very nice sandblast on it. Um, I bought that not from the Danish pipe shop. I bought this from GQ Tobacco's, I'm pretty sure. Um, acrylic stem, silver band. And this one is pretty much perfect, you know. Drilling is right. Um, so I've got no complaints with this one. So as I say, some of them seem to just have been made better than others. I don't know if it's pot luck. Maybe they're a bit more careful with the pipes of the year. I honestly don't know. But um, this one, um, I should really smoke it more. It's a really good pipe. It smokes quite neutral. So I get a pretty faithful flavor coming through. Um, I'm going to leave it out so I can smoke it. I'll put it next to me over here. Um, so with Stanwell, I think that they've probably suffered because there's been a little bit of inconsistency there with the quality control. Um, but still, at the end of the day, it's sad when you see a storied company like that go to the wall. Right, let's see if this back here is ready. I think so. Put the extractor on. 10 o'clock almost, so I've got a bit moving. When you want to fill your pipe and you're putting in all the last dregs, just put your fist around it slightly higher than the rim and you just pour it in and anything that goes over the sides just bounces off your hand into the bowl and whatever doesn't, you then just sweep it in. So you lose nothing, you don't lose any tobacco that way. It's just a simple thing, but it works. Chalk and cheese, the draw is absolutely spot on now, as it should be. Mm. I was really s pulling air through it yesterday, it was making a noise, it was, it was just too tight, but it's where it should be now.
So I'm going to see if I can find another Ebershorn block so that I can get uh, some bird's eye on the side. If not, I'm going to use a, a plateau block and then have some uh, flint grain or straight grain. Um, and if I do find one, I'll just do a faux plateau. I've done that before. It's not, you know, it won't look as good as plateau, but it's, um, it's. Uh, I think basically what customer wants is a dark textured finish so that, you know, at the end of the day, when you smoke a pipe regularly, the top does get black. So if it's already black, it doesn't really matter. And that's a good, that's a good theory. And I've used it myself when I've commissioned pipes. If you're commissioning a pipe and you don't mind it being rusticated on the top or even the plateau, just have it stained black and you never have to worry about scorched rims. But most people, at the end of the day, are purists and they like to have a smooth pipe. You know, if the grain will, will stand up to it, then, you know, people want a smooth pipe, including the rim. It's smoking very well now. Back to how it should be. Clinches very well. You've got that short saddle, but it, it just sits on your chin really well. It is, hmm. And these are preformed, and they're really, really good quality. Obviously, I do my thing with them. I adapt them to make them as comfortable as I can. You know, so essentially, you'll notice no difference between a hand cut stem or a preformed stem um, so you do have to do a fair bit of work but um, still um, they're shaping on these the machine ones they're all done by machine so they're spot on every time the drills are spot on every time in actual fact in my opinion the preformed stems the drill on preformed stems are better than hand cut ones that's just my personal opinion So if you're buying a pipe and you're getting into it and you're worried about whether it's hand cut or not, as long as the pipe looks right and the design of the pipe looks correct, put it this way, if the design, if the, you look at a pipe and you can't tell if it's a preformed stem or if it's a hand cut stem, then you're good to go. And if I use a preformed stem, which I don't that much anymore, but if I did, um, that's what I'm aiming for, is that it, looks, it should lo it's look so integrated into the design that you can't tell whether it's hand cut or not. Um, and I've done that, I've done that exercise in the past. I had five or six pipes laid out, some hand cut and some uh, preformed stems. And it was a live session and I challenged people to tell me which ones were uh, hand cut and which ones were, were preformed. And they couldn't tell, they got them wrong. So um, that's what I aim for if I do use a preformed stem. And uh, you would notice no difference at all in the smoking or in the design. Uh, most of the time I'm using Ebonite now, so most of the time it's hand cut. And if you see me, um, a pipe of mine with a coloured Ebonite, then it's going to be hand cut. which I've been using a lot. I've ordered a, I mean, I've got some in stock, but I've ordered another batch. So that'll be good to go for quite some time. It's a really, really nice material. I didn't use it on this one. This one, this pipe, which is still available. Um, this is like a XL size, not quite a magnum, but it is very big. Um, it's the same, similar kind of stem material, but it's got the addition of brown. So it's three colors as opposed to two colors. Um, beautiful stem as well on that one.
Well, I think that's it for me today. So if you've got a pipe which is drawing a bit tight, don't set it aside and let it uh, languish in your drawer. Just get a drill bit, same size as the actual draft, and just re-drill it. And that will just clean it right down to the original drill size. You know, you could clean it and clean it and clean it with a, with a pipe cleaner. And sometimes if you've got tar, which has really hardened, it's very hard and very stubborn to get it out, even with a wire brush sometimes. So when you're into that stage, then a drill bit, as long as you're going back to the original drill size, that's the best way to do it. It's a surefire way to do it. Unless you want to open it to make it wider. If your draft is very narrow, then yes, get a bigger drill bit. But again, as I said before, better to do it in small increments. But if you go up to four or four, if you've got no filter, if you've got a standard 10 and then four mil is fine. Um, if you've got a filter, then I would say go to four and a half mil. Um, but um, it's an exercise definitely worth doing. It's one of the things which I took from Rick Newcomb's book. Um, and I think it's probably the best thing that I've taken out of that book. It's uh, definitely worth my exercise. Anyway, I've been going on long enough. Have a great day, everybody. Catch you on the next one.